What's good YouTube? Welcome back to JY's Adventures. In this video we got how to beat the other in Hellfest. Reaction request from my comment section. Shout out to you guys that keep leaving requests in the comment section. Really appreciate it. This is by Nerd Explains. As always, Nerd Explains is a legend. Link to the original video will be down in the description. Get that out. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Let's get this video to 100 likes. Remember, guys, you guys are the best, and you can accomplish anything you put your mind to. Without any further ado, let's go. If you were trapped in a haunted house theme park with a psycho killer stalking you, what would you do? I'm going to break down the mistakes Wait, made by the six friends, <laughs> see if we can make better choices, and Stalker? ultimately attempt to beat the other in Hellfest. I've always thought that a haunted house would make for a good killing ground. It's dark, foggy, everyone's wearing identity obscuring costumes. costumes, other employees won't easily know who is and isn't an employee, there's plenty of ways to sneak in and out of the houses or parks, it's easy to get close to us, the victim, totally not instructions to harm, thieve, or kill innocent people YouTube, we are the victims here. It'll take a while for people to realize an actual murder spree Crap. is going down, since they'll just think the murder is an act where the bodies are convincing props made with red dye and corn syrup. That's if the bodies are found. There's a million ways to hide a body in a haunted theme park. The longer time to find bodies is important because it means the killer can smell the roses, so to speak. As a victim, time is huh. not on our side. Once the deed is done, there's all sorts of secret doors and passageways to quickly it's escape to through with pre-plated costume change points to throw the tail if any witnesses got wise. I'm actually surprised this hasn't happen more often. Again, not advice. This is just how a killer <laughs> might think about a haunted think. house. It's going to be difficult to Giving defeat the ideas. other. He stands a good chance of walking free if he's careful. It's Halloween and three girls are hitting up the Orange Grove Community Fair's Horror Night Haunted Maze. It's full of the usual jump scares. One jump scare causes Jody to split from her group in a panic. It turns out to be a dead end, literally. Jody gets stabbed to death and hung up like a prop. I can't Rip fault Jody, Jody too much. How could she know that one of the haunted house goons was actually a serial killer. What may have unwittingly prevented her death, however, would have been staying with her group and taking the right tunnel. At the last jump scare, Jody split off and took a left. This was totally unnecessary. She was in the back of the group holding on to her friends. She could see and feel that they were both going right and followed. Even after she got split up, all she'd have to do was back up and go down the other tunnel. Her friends also should have noticed that Jody was missing Wait, and missing. done the same. If everyone didn't suck, they'd have met back back up at the Y split where they'd probably get murdered anyways since three <laughs> unarmed teenage girls don't stand much of a chance against a serial killer with a blade. Jody's out. Now it's up to the next group. Rip it would have probably Jody. been a better option if the group of friends stayed home and tapped into another country to watch a horror film by using our video sponsor NordVPN. NordVPN is a deep security with server block located block on Shout out to the sponsor location. man. V Exclusive VPNs deal for our viewers. Legitimate. Final girl risk free. Lead to me since kindergarten. College visit back guarantee. VPNs Several years legit. later, uptight final girl I Natalie is back from college visiting her best friend Brooke, who she learns is now living with her sworn enemy since kindergarten Taylor. Nat's out of the loop and feels uh -oh. even more uncomfortable when Brooke and Taylor tell her that her high school crush Gavin got them all VIP tickets for Hellfest, knowing she was coming. Upon arrival to the park, Taylor and Brooke's boyfriend Quinn tell Nat fun. that people get murdered so in theme parks all the time, and specifically mentions a girl who was gutted and hung from the rafters in an Orange Grove haunted house two years ago. In this day of smartphones and internet, it's surprising Nat, being the studious type, doesn't pull out her phone and check the story the second Taylor brings it up. I definitely would have. A simple <laughs> Google search would reveal a string of murders at haunted houses over the years, with the killer still at large. Is it going to stop them from going? It wouldn't stop me. Just because a kid was abducted by an ice cream truck doesn't mean you're not gonna snatch a bomb pop from one on a hot summer day. Health S looks dope, especially the Deadlands and their hell maze where the monsters can get physical with you, which coincidentally is the perfect place for a killer to snuff someone's life out. Still gonna go. Statistically, one person getting shanked out of millions visiting haunted houses per year is negligible. Now, I said I'm gonna go, but with certain precautions taken. Okay. Despite what the sign says, I'm taking my phone and a weapon. Being unarmed phone only makes weapon. my paranoia worse. Just bad for everyone. At roll call, the girls catch up with Taylor's boyfriend Asher and Nat's missed connection Gavin, who are waiting with VIP bracelets. As you'd expect, the park lives up to its name immediately 
immediately. Masked scares, dominatrix demons in cages, and every fog machine known to man running on full blast. And shots. <laughs> Lots of shots. Shot, Meanwhile, shot, our shot, anonymous shot, killer, shots. the other, makes his way into the park too, bypassing the metal detectors unarmed. Once inside, he dons his deformed face mask and mask. blocks a girl in the crowd mocking the fried actors. Already having selected his first target, he swipes nice Grabs pick from a, a snow cone stand oh, and begins stalking her. You'd think after a spree of haunted house murders, Hellfest would be surrounded by tall fencing, patrolled by guards or cameras. The park would be overflowed with security guards security, who actually scan what visitors. Happened last I mean, seriously, time. what about the right side of the guy you just scanned? Security cameras covering all areas of the park, clearly marked fire exits and emergency booths, properly locked up employee-only areas and back entrances. Oh, and long, sharp knives wouldn't be left out just in the open where they could get easily in the swiped. Open. Not that it would have stopped a determined attacker. The other could have easily hit a weapon inside the park months prior to Halloween when there was no security. The other's biggest mistake so far is putting his mask on in plain view. Any number of cameras could have caught the disguise change. It'd have been better to do it in a camera blind spot to avoid having the mask tied back to you when the police scour the park footage after the murders. This might gotcha. be nitpicky, but he should have also worn fresh boots without distinct scuffs. All it take is someone witnessing a masked man leaving a murder scene. The police ruling out all the employees wearing the same mask, identifying a man putting on that same mask when he entered the park, as well as the scuffed brown boots, obtaining a warrant to search the man's home, then finding those same scuffed boots inside his home inside and his home. murder trophy closet. And it's off to prison for the rest of his life. His next biggest mistake was not wearing gloves. That should also make him easier to track down. His fingerprints, fingerprints. will be all over everything. The odds that the other is going to get caught are going up, though that doesn't matter much for the victims who will die before he gets caught. The friends enter their first haunted house. It's all fun and games until the girls get split up and walk into a classroom with a girl pleading for her life, telling them that he is following her before hiding in oh, a nearby curtain. When the other is. appears, Nat jokes that he isn't scary and they, motions to the curtain joking. where the girl is hiding to get him back on script. He drags the girl out of hiding and pins her to the floor. It's too much for Brooke and Taylor, so they run out. But Nat stays. When he raises the ice pick, she tells him to just do it already, and he stabs the panicking girl to death. Nat assumes it's part of the haunted house and leaves to find her friends, looking back to find him what? watching her a few moments later. We could point out the fact that the girl did- She's so, she's so clueless, y'all. She literally just watched the murder happen in front of her face, friends, fam. looking back to find him watching her a few moments later. We could point out the fact that the girl did not look like an actress, or the knife stabbing looked too real, too but real. it is completely <laughs> reasonable that Natalie thought it was part of the haunted house, especially when similar skits I are guess. being performed by other employees. This ain't on her. The only way the innocent girl could have survived was with clutch decision making. Hiding behind the stage curtains makes it look like you're part of the act, isolates you, and gives you no way to retreat. If I was the innocent girl, I'd have stayed with the other three girls. Obviously, I'd try to explain that I was wasn't an employee, and a murderer is it's in the not maze. An but if they tell me off, I'd just rush back out the way they came in and flag security to watch all the exits for a man with his description, and to swarm the maze. Hellfest should be taking these issues seriously with the haunted house killer on the loose. With how slow the other stalks, I think they'd have caught him. The group hangs out for a bit. Nat and Gavin jump into a photo booth to make out. Unbeknownst to them, the other is still following them. He steals their pictures oh, no, and walks away him. just as Brooke spots him. Brooke chases him into an empty behind the scenes section of the park. Park, but she stops when she hears him humming and scraping his weapon along the railing. Now back with the group, Nat's concerned the haunted house employee is taking things too far, but the others just think he's going for employee of the year and set their sights on their next theme park section, the Deadlands. Even if Nat's friends were right, stalking is something everyone should take seriously. Take seriously. It can and often does lead to violence. Statistics from the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence suggest that as high as 85% of women who survive murder attempts are stalked prior to their attack, and 54% of female murder victims told police that they were being stalked before they were killed by their stalkers. Oh. Seeing this guy once is one thing, but seeing him twice Always, always gotta check the statistics, yeah. Before they were killed by their stalkers. Seeing this guy once is one thing, but seeing him seeing twice him. and then having him steal a personal item is something else. If nothing else, Nat should pull out her phone and record the other record whenever he appears. Least. This way, when she's later attacked and goes to security, she can present them with at least some evidence that she has reason to be worried. They won't be able to dismiss her claims as hearsay or exaggeration. Even though this is a common mask worn by employees in the park, video footage could be used 
used to alert a supervisor that someone wearing an employee mask is stealing from customers. The park should know through various supervisors who is wearing what and where. This can help identify the people that are out of place and narrow down the search. A smart supervisor might recall all employees wearing that mask to a back room and then tell security that they should hold anyone who doesn't come and is wearing that mask as a potential imposter. Nat should give a full recount of the events too. The security might even realize that there should never have been a deformed face mask person in that part of the maze, and there shouldn't have been a murder, murder act performed. Act this could on. raise their suspicions and make them check that part of the maze. The other couldn't have moved her body far with all the foot traffic, and based on previous killings, he may have hung her up. Once the body is found, the other's time is up. Brooke makes a near-fatal decision to follow the other into an isolated area after he steals Nat's photos. It should go without saying that $10 photos are not worth confronting a man who's been stalking you through the entire park, who, the by the by way, yourself? probably stole the photos and fled to a secluded area as bait for an ambush. He sure as shit didn't steal them <laughs> for their high value. Good thing Quinn pulled her back in time. Oh, she was okay. one minute from becoming a prop. When Brooke returned Lucky. to the group, she acted like she scared him off, when what she should have done was tell them that she heard humming and a knife being sharpened. If I heard this in the park, okay, but this was the back shed. There shouldn't be real blades that are being sharpened. It's not a good sign. Gavin ditches the group to double back to the games area to get Nat a toy. When the game barker won't give him one, he sneaks into an employee-only locker room to steal one. In the locker room, the other ambushes yeah, Gavin. Before Gavin can leave, the other trips him with a mallet, then uses the blunt end to crush his windpipe. As he tries to crawl away, the other smashes his head to pull. Gavin, Gavin, Gavin. You've already made out with Nat. You know she likes you. Splitting up and leaving her alone to steal a 10 cent toy from an employee locker room is just really dumb. Imagine getting bopped by a mallet. In 2022, y'all. Leaving her alone to steal a 10 Eustace cent from toy Courage, from an employee the locker dog. room is just really dumb. He'd be better off returning to the group and surprising her with a stuffed toy when they meet for a date a couple days later. Not to right. mention, a man has been stalking your group for a while now and has stolen your picks. The last place I'd want to go was some isolated locker room by myself. By myself. As soon as the guy cornered me in an isolated area outside the park zone, I'd be in fight mode. This is not an actor, especially after he physically bumped me since we aren't aren't in the Deadlands were touching us aloud, and especially since he has a weapon, has been stalking them, and has stolen their picks. Everyone's too nonchalant about this deformed Get face mask guy. Nice when the lot. other shoulder checks and blocks Gavin's path, his best course it's... of action is to immediately disorient the masked man and then return to the public area of the park to track ran. down security. <laughs> when the other raises the mallet to prevent Gavin from leaving, Gavin should have decked him with the right hook. The small eye holes and lopsided okay. design of the mask already limit Catch the other's visibility, guy. so off, he won't see guard. it coming, and hitting him one should impair his vision long enough for Gavin to get away. Run. When the other tripped Gavin, he should have been sprinting out of there, not whining. Bro, why did you trip me? Then he should run to security and explain the whole situation with this dude. Gavin was Instant. too passive. Now, Nat's alone. Now at the point of no return, the remaining five friends are funneled into a park ride called Night Bumps, which will lead them into the Deadlands. The ride breaks down halfway through and red emergency lights flicker on to reveal the other standing in the dark, watching oh, Natalie alone in her car. As he stalks towards her, Natalie tries to get out of her seat, but the safety bar restrains her. She screams for help. When her car rolls into the ride's exit, her friends see the other sitting on the lap bar, leering over her. He turns to stare at them as another person wearing the same hoodie and mask steps up behind them and to the left and right of them. They stop freaking out when they realize it's a scare tactic it's of the Deadlands to plant a creepy oh, masked no. guy in a car with a single rider. If Nat was that freaked out, she should have slipped under the bars. It looked like there was enough room. Pushing up on it is futile considering it's designed to resist upwards motion. What park employee is going to keep the act up when a girl is legit screaming for her life? And what park employee is going to hop on top of the safety bar safety like that? Bar. It's actually another major OSHA violation that applies to theme parks. Not that Nat could have done much at that point, and the dude didn't have scuffed boots. The friends finally reach the Deadlands. Now the employees can get physical, and killers are harder to spot. A group of deformed children are there ready to guide them deeper into the triple maze that acts as the entrance to hell. In the triple maze, the girls and guys 
guys split up. The girl's maze looks like a set out of house on Haunted Hill with dismembered patients and a crazed doctor. The guys come across a jump scaring drug addict on the floor. Whoa. Once again, the other stalks the group and grabs a syringe she finds in one of the rooms. Soon, the girls wander into the Hall of Hands. When Taylor and Brooke break free, they leave Nat behind. It takes her so long to break free that the hallway slides sideways, leading her down a second secret corridor. Nat stumbles alone into the next room where the other taunts her again. Another. She finds the door and bursts out, running to join Taylor, Brooke, and Quinn, who were waiting for Asher. Asher got separated from the group and ended up in a body pit full of bloody dummies, all save the other, who tackles Asher to a pile of prosthetics and stabs him through the eye with a syringe, slamming it down deep Rip. into his skull. This place is a death trap even without the psycho killer running around. Sure, these people signed a liability waiver allowing people to touch them while in the Deadlands, but using real props like this metal syringe and an axe the other will later use is likely an act of gross negligence. Then you have the motion-activated moving wall that slides sideways quick enough to crush someone if they trip or stop suddenly. Asher had no way of knowing that the other was waiting in the dark to ambush him. He also likely could not have prevented himself from being floored, with his right arm pinned by the other's knee and left hand holding back the syringe. Asher's in a bad spot, but it's not checkmate yet. Gravity is working against Asher, and the other has more strength and leverage here. Instead yeah. of trying to repel a stronger opponent, he needs to redirect the energy while pushing outwards with his left hand to divert the other's force. He needs to knock the other out of a control position with his legs by pushing his hips up into Use the bridge post, forcing the other off balance and sending his weapon away from Asher's eye socket. This bump will also free his right arm. Movies would lead you to believe that a simple pimp smack from right field will end this fight, but you can't generate much punch force at all from the bottom of a mount position. Instead, Asher should tuck his head you. and squeeze the other's torso with his now torso. freed right hand to avoid the ground and pound. Okay. While pulling and locking the other's syringe-wielding arm into his body to not only prevent himself from getting stabbed, but also to roll the other off. Allowing the syringe arm to be free will result in him shanking you down. This wouldn't be as big of a problem if the other had a standard half-inch subcutaneous needle, but homie's got a 3.5-inch needle. This could easily reach and puncture a lung or heart, which are only about an inch and a half from the skin peristernally. Will it be enough? Who knows? But at least he now has even odds. Outside, Nat gets slimed by a monster and goes to the bathroom with Brooke to clean it off. When Brooke leaves, the other steps silently inside to join again. Nat. He responds to her text to Gavin to catch up with him, and when she hears Gavin's phone beep in the bathroom with her, he blocks the door to her stall and begins to rattle it. Nat crawls under the stall wall to get away, only for the other to reach down from above and grab her. Got she her. breaks free and runs out, finding Brooke nearby. Unfortunately for these two, Hellfest wears its liability waiver like a suit of chainmail. When they try to get to the nearest security guy to take the attack seriously, he says there's nothing he can do given that there's about 15 people scattered across the park wearing the same mask as her attacker. Even when Brooke finds the photos Nat and Gavin took lying on the floor, the guard suggests Gavin is pranking them and tells them that ultimately being scared is the whole point of the park and someone out there is just doing Worst security guard ever, okay? Worst security guard ever. Right them and tells them that ultimately being scared is the whole point of the park and someone out there is just doing their job. Yeah, there was no reason for Brooke to leave Nat alone when she's terrified of a stalker. How the hell is this bathroom empty anyways? When she texted Gavin and immediately heard a ringtone in another stall, that would be far too much of a coincidence for me. I'd have checked under the stall where I'd have seen his scuffed boots, then bolted out of there or just ran back outside and texted Gavin a personal question only he would know the answer to. Wrong answer, and we'll know something we bad know has some probably happened, happened to him. Sliding right. under the it's stall off. seems off. like a clever move, but we are hearing all the drama music. In reality, it's quiet. He would 100% hear you crawling on the floor. It also puts you in a vulnerable position. I'd have gotten up on the toilet for the high ground and called my friends to help me while screaming like a little bitch. This is the <laughs> epitome of police being minutes away when seconds count. Don't bother. She stood little chance once cornered in the stall though. Nat got lucky that this was yet another taunt. Once free, video evidence of him following them could have come in handy when talking to security. Should've With Gavin it. and Asher unresponsive, now is the time to leave. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that they're already dead and well hidden amongst the rubber corpses. While security could escort them out of the park to safety immediately, it's never that easy. When they return to Quinn, they learn that Taylor has volunteered herself for a guillotine performance. Nat notices that the executioner's boots match the scuffed boots of the other who attacked you know, her in 
the bathroom in panics. She tries to stop the performance, but security oh, no. holds her back. The guillotine no. blade falls, and a blonde head rolls across the, the head stage. Falls it's off. a fake, of course. The show closes, the curtain swings closed, and Taylor pops her head up from where it was hidden behind the guillotine. Oh, okay. The other stops Not forward if... and slides her neck under the real guillotine blade. He removes his hood to reveal the lopsided mask underneath. Taylor begins to call for help. Oh, the no. other pulls the lever on the guillotine. The blade slices into Taylor's neck. Of course, haunted houses don't usually use real guillotines, so the blade leaves a gash instead of removing her head. The other rewinds the blade for another go. Again. While he's distracted, Taylor manages to escape, but the other pursues her into the crowd. Okay, let's just move past the obvious issue. That semi-sharp guillotine blade is a huge safety issue. It should be made out of plastic like any cheap prop would be. More importantly, Nat should know better than to panic like this when she thinks Taylor's in trouble. Approaching security in a crazed manner is only going to make them make react them as if you're unstable. Weird. Instead, yeah. she could have approached the stage from the front and climbed up to interrupt the show before they could release the lever. In the moment she has before getting pulled away by security, Nat needs to tell Taylor that Gavin and Asher are in serious trouble and help her get out of the restraints. Taylor should have realized by now that any skit or device set up by this OSHA violation of a theme park should be avoided, but she had no way of knowing the other would be behind the executioner's hood. When he forces her forward under the blade and straps a belt around her throat, she should be screaming her head off. By that right. point, the noise outside has died down and screams like that should bring the entire security team and stage crew running. running. running when she's stage. free, it's bizarre that she runs away deeper into the park instead of finding Nat's broken quint. She just made excuses for Nat's panic to the security guards, so she knows that that's where she'll find protection as well. Once running through the park and realizing the people around her aren't going to help her, she should run until she's out of the other's line of sight, hide and wait for him to pass by, then call the police and text our friends to meet her so that they can right. run to the exit together. Walking and screaming with the other right behind you is about the worst thing you could do. Again, it just makes you look like part of the show. Quinn hears Taylor screaming and person. runs to help. <laughs> Taylor begs passerbys who watch in confusion, then tear as the other slashes her face and stabs her in the gut. Quinn tries to intervene and takes an ice pick to the chest and abdomen too. We too. already covered Taylor's mistakes. There's no saving her now. By the time Quinn got to Taylor, she was already seriously wounded. You could say that Quinn should have stayed back since Taylor was already dead, but there's still a chance she could survive if the other wasn't able to follow up with another stab to a vital area. It looks like the ice pick went into the right shoulder, far away from the heart, which is slightly left of the sternum, potentially hitting a lung at most. Even if okay. Quinn didn't see exactly where she got stabbed, generally there's a decent chance stab victims can survive, survive. if she got to an ER right away. Especially with a nice pick chance. that won't cause as much tissue damage. Point being, she's not a total lost cause, and trying to save her isn't foolish. Quinn tapping the other on the shoulder to ask him what's going on was weak. With Asher and Gavin missing, Nat screaming a killer is after them, and now Taylor is screaming and running from- he should have already thought like, yo, something is up. What is you What is you doing? Now Taylor is screaming and running from that same guy. You'd think he'd take this seriously and enter with a rear naked choke, sucker punch, or a tackle. Tackling Start is punching, dangerous choking, since you get something. entangled with a right. man who has a knife. Even if you have his back, he can still stab you. A rear naked choke properly applied could put him out in five to 10 seconds. Still long enough for him really? to over the shoulder stab you. The sucker punch could divert his attention from Taylor and enable you to maintain distance from him. Hopefully, long enough for security Fight to get there and restrain it. The silver lining in Quinn and Taylor's death is that now everyone knows that there's a killer in the park, so time isn't on his side anymore. They just need to avoid getting stuck behind a crowd and follow the main path to an exit. Easy enough. Nat pulls Brooke away as the other turns to pursue them. In the background, the park announces it's shutting down now. The other is suddenly right. seized by security and forced to the ground. His mask is removed only for us to realize that this it's guy's wearing red person. shoes, but he's not the other. I love how the park doesn't even say that there's a murderer killing people. They just announce the park is closing early. I know you don't want to incite panic and cause stampeding, but if a guy is slashing through your visitors, maybe you a little panic running know. is warranted. Most haunted houses will or should have radios on actors and managers at all times. At all this times, horribly okay. mismanaged park should have immediately told all their deformed face mask wearing employees to remove their costumes so the killer could be more easily identified. The real masked psycho killer pursues Nat and Taylor 
Taylor across the Deadlands. He's like idiots, Adam Brooke duck inside a demon mouth door, only to realize it's not an exit, but the maze entrance to the park's scariest section, hell. As they run through looking for hell the way fixed. out, the other enters and finds an actually sharp axe, because of course this park left one lying around. He locks the maze's entrance by breaking off the handle. Halfway through the maze, Natalie realizes they're endangering themselves by running through rooms which have ankle-high motion triggers for jump and sound effects, something the other could use to track them. Track Instead, them she pulls Nat into a closet and waits for the other to move past them, then doubles back avoiding sound triggers. Unfortunately, the other had smashed Locked off the, the door, door handle. Brooke panics, screaming and banging on the door. Natalie Dumb. calms her down and pulls her back inside. Really, Nat she and Brooke, you a demon mouth? How could you possibly confuse this with an exit? Don't tell me you intentionally ran into a maze when you know from experience they don't put clearly marked fire exits in them. I can see how hiding in the closet might seem like a good option. Actually, no, I can't. It's an incredibly <laughs> high odds bet that he doesn't check these check closet it. doors while looking for them. It ultimately worked out for them, sort of. The other closed the entrance door and banged the door handle off, thinking it would lock the door. In reality, that's movie BS. Like shooting an electrical door control panel, he allowed the girls to double really? back to the entrance. By waltzing past the closet they were hiding in, falsely assuming that they would get stuck at the entrance and he could ambush them later. Of course, Nat and Brooke are both idiots too, and don't even think to put a finger in the doorknob hole to pull it back open. They just cry, yell, and bang on the door without trying to open try it to at all. With the exit locked, they didn't even try to push it down or something, you know what I'm saying? Open. They just cry, yell, and bang on the door without trying to open it at all. With the exit locked, Nat and Brooke try looking for weapons, but the only real thing that they find is a wooden torch and a rudimentary wooden club. Gotta love how the park doesn't want you to bring in any weapons while filling the maze with actual with weapons. weapons themselves. <laughs> Finding the wooden torches and clubs in comparison to the sharp axe that he finds is just oh, bad no. luck and ridiculously oh, no. good He's luck so for creepy. the villain. They arrive back He's at the so closet creepy, they yeah. hid in to find that the door they left Left open is now closed. Tiptoeing past, they come to a mannequin and possessed doll room, accidentally setting off a trap. The other emerges from hiding and oh, slashes Brooke's leg with his axe. Ooh, Nat quickly retaliates yeah. by smashing her club over his head, knocking him she to the floor him. as they flee. Gee, who could have anticipated that the other would be waiting to ambush them deeper into the maze after noticing the closet door was closed back up when they had left it open? Walking into an ambush, even when you know you're walking into an ambush, is a bad, bad idea. Idea. It'd be better to wait in the torture room and set your own ambush. He's on the clock for him and to will get antsy and come. Or not. And you buy yourself enough time for the cops to show up. If they... Smart, y'all. Very smart. This is so creepy, y'all. The other... I know it's just a serial killer, but it's so creepy. Giving me Mike Mike Myers vibes. Look at Nancy and come. Or not. And you buy yourself enough time for the cops to show up. If they are hell-bent on pushing forwards into his trap, they should at least do so with their backs to each other, so that they have a 360-degree view of the rooms as they enter them, preventing the other from getting the full drop on them. Once the other comes out of hiding to attack, we can applaud how quickly Nat uses her club to knock the other down. However, as you've heard me say before, once he's down, she should continue whacking at his head until she feels something squishy. At the very least, she should grab the axe and take it with her so he can't use it on them again. Nat and Brooke stumble into a room that seems like a dead end of disembodied masked heads. As the other searches for them, Nat dons on one of the masks herself to hide in plain sight. She watches as the other stalks through the middle and finds a hidden exit that lets out into hell, accompanied by a voice telling him he's clever for finding it. Since he didn't hear that message before, the other turns Turns back Crazy. to the room, knowing that the girls are still in there. He slams his axe into a mannequin, momentarily getting it caught. Nat emerges from hiding and Hit begins him. hitting him with nice. her club. He drops his ice pick. Nat tells Brooke to run. Unfortunately, her pathetic blows only stop him momentarily. The other gets up and slams his axe into Nat's nose. Instead of finishing Nat off, he pursues Brooke deeper into the maze. I have no complaints about hiding amongst the masks. The problem is smart. with their follow through, or lack thereof. Nat got <laughs> in a good swing. Wing. But Brooke needed to join in with to kicks to the face. To Natalie something. also missed a Both huge opportunity to pick up the knife he dropped and gut him right after him. her bat broke. Instead, she resorted to the pathetic stomach kicks. And if you're gonna kick, kick him in the head. I know this is Nat's hero moment, but 1v1 is bad odds. And if he kills Nat, Brooke won't be able to make it out of the maze with her injured leg before the other catches up. As for the other, when he entered the mask room, he should have gone behind the mannequins and started knocking them all down. This way, 
if Brook and Nat are hiding amongst them with weapons, they won't be able to attack him without giving away their position first. This would likely cause Nat and Brook to panic run and give themselves away. Oh, and why not take two seconds to drop the fire axe on Nat's head before chasing Brook? You could spare the time with how slow Brook is. This is going to be a costly mistake. The other catches up to Brook, stalking forward to land the killing blow, Brooke, only no. for Nat to emerge from a motion triggered jump scare door and stab him with the ice stab pick. Him. The girls flee, running into the cops who enter from the only emergency exit I've seen this entire time. All seems safe, but the other is gone when the cops go in to search for him, finding yeah, a smear him. of his blood on the floor. A police oh, officer no. informs the girls that he's Don't still at large. The gruesome away. killings are already radio news no. when the other rolls into a suburban driveway and enters his home. He seems completely unharmed despite that gut stab. He hides his lopsided mask in a locked cupboard with a collection of other masks and his souvenir from the night, the photos of Nat and Gavin. He presents his daughter a Hellfest toy as we cut to credits. God you damn it, Nat. You had him. Why on earth did you stop stabbing him? Would people please finish the fight when they have the opportunity? At least the other now has a gaping knife wound in his gut that he won't be able to go to a hospital for. I'm no doctor, but I don't think you can DIY fix deep stab wounds with a sewing kit and rubbing alcohol. Of course, the police also suck and don't think to cover all the exits to prevent right. the serial killer from slipping away. Him, if the other away. doesn't die from his wounds, we can be pretty sure that the camera footage caught this guy's bare face on camera at the entrance. It's only a matter of time until they search his house and find his poorly hidden collection. With the statements, it'll be easy to find the real blood in the haunted house, and there is plenty to get a lot of DNA. It is very possible that the killer's DNA- The forensic scientist gonna pull up and take, you know, help us catch him, bruh. This man got a daughter, fam. This is like his little hobby. Every time I'm gonna go to Hellfest and get some kills, y'all. I'm gonna increase my KD. Haha. <laughs> Haunted house. Crazy, and there is fam. plenty to get a lot of DNA. It is very possible that the killer's DNA is not in the system. But with genomic sequencing, it is possible to narrow it down. If this guy slipped up years later and did a 23andMe or Ancestry.com, they could also match him like they match did the Golden State the... Killer. It's also possible with their statements Crazy. and uncovering okay. the bodies that the police could lift his prints off the guillotine lever, ice pick not kept the bathroom door handle, or a giant hammer Gavin was killed with. <laughs> Should've worn gloves. Let's see who could have lived or died if we were in control. Jody may have been able to follow her friends down the right path and avoided his initial trap, but the other likely would have caught up and killed her regardless. Yeah. Brittany, oh, the girl her. in the classroom, probably could have survived had she ran out the way Brooke, Taylor, and Nat came in. Gavin should have stayed with Nat, possibly enabling him to survive and help keep okay. his friends alive. Asher could have evened the odds, but the other still had the knife in his pocket. So, so Asher would have gotten him. killed anyways. Taylor yeah. could have kept sprinting for an exit and called her friends once she was in the safe area, enabling her to survive and not creating the altercation in which Quinn was stabbed, so he could survive too. Natalie and Brooke had a few key moments where they could have finished the other off. Even though they didn't, the other will die from his wound or would have gotten caught by the cameras and fingerprints he left behind. Considering all this, I think the other from Hellfest was beaten. Thanks for watching, and remember, don't put your disguise on in front of security cameras. This is this is the this is the moral of the story guys. Don't put your disguise on in front of security cameras. Great video. You know what I'm saying? The other is a creepy horror villain, fam. I didn't I didn't think I'd like any of the newer horror villains, but this one right here is pretty creepy. When did this movie come out? Let me know in the comment section. Fire video, like I said from Nerd Explains. Always a banger, fam. I got chills seeing this man move and how he how he acted, fam. Thank y'all so much for the reaction requests in the comments, y'all. Let me know what y'all thought of the video. What was your favorite part? Y'all think y'all would have been able to beat this man? I think I would have, cause it's just a it's just a regular guy. You know what I'm saying? All I had to do was get my friends to believe me, and all of us team up to take him down, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? Thank y'all so much for watching. If you enjoyed my reaction, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Let's get this video to 100 likes. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.